Welcome to Unmasking Humanity 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. I'm your host, Joshua. Thank you all so much for being here. We are broadcasting on the World's Mayor Experience platform that you can find at www.joshuatberglund.com. And not only can you find the World's Mayor Experience platform there, you can find all of our immersive books. Um, I think we have six books up there now that I've either written or co-written. And um, I really like the immersive reading platform, by the way. This is how I like to read books. And um, when creating this platform, I wanted to create an enjoyable reading experience because a lot of people read on their phones now. And this is a new way to read on your phone. So go check out the interactive uh, immersive reading platform on the World's Mayor Experience. But also there's tons of education, everything from media literacy, AI, independent media, there's trainings, there's all kinds of video content, there's audio content. Uh, there's there's just a lot there, so go enjoy yourself, have a lot of fun there. But anyway, this is Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund, and that's me. And today, I'm really excited and kind of nervous, and here's why. And I've said this multiple times on this version of a broadcast that I'm doing, that I normally don't interview friends. And I'm not even sure I can call Melissa a friend, because she used to be my boss. And... Uh, and, and I will say this about her. I mean, I wanted to be her friend because she was awesome, um, but I wasn't necessarily in the best place back then. Um, and I wasn't a good employee. Uh, that said, uh, Melissa is one of the people that, I, I, there's, I've had a couple female bosses in my life that I looked up to and respected, um, like a friend, like a mother, like a, 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 a sister even. And uh, Tracy Simplewich, and Melissa Georgioff are two of those women. And Tracy and I have been friends for years and she was a former boss when I was in healthcare living in Florida. And Melissa uh, was my boss when I, after my family and I, or my father and I sold our healthcare business. And um, we had a durable medical equipment. We worked with complex disabilities. I was in that industry for 18 years. I love it. My passion and love for fighting for the underserved it started there at a very young age, even before I officially started in the industry at 16. Um, even before then, I was going to nursing homes and assisted living centers at two o'clock in the morning with my dad. Um, you know, I'm very, my passion for the underserved is not, is not some new thing when I got in media. It all started working with people with complex disabilities. And so Melissa is somebody that I've had so much respect for um, when not even, even before she hired me, but then going through the hiring process uh, for this really cool role, and I won't go into all the detail, but she took a chance on me and because she saw something in me that I didn't see myself, that I didn't believe myself. In fact, a lot of people um, back then saw a lot of good things in me that I couldn't see. And um, Melissa is one of the people I let down and it's always bothered me because I respect her so much. And when I got fired from that job, um, it did set me up for everything I'm doing now. I have no regrets at all, but letting her down was something that I've never been able to really let go of. And that, she has no idea I'm saying any of this stuff right now um, because she's not gonna see this until the actual interview. But that disappointment and letting someone down that believed in me, that took a chance on me, is something that has stuck with me for years. And it's been well over 10 years uh, since all of this happened. But throughout the years, I've followed Melissa's journey and I've been blown away by the leader that she is, the woman that she is, just the human being. It's I Look, I'm all for powerful women and all of that, and I love that. I love powerful women that take a stand, that step into leadership roles, I love it. But she's also just a human being too, and a very, really awesome, amazing, extraordinary human being. So to have the opportunity to interview her and talk really face-to-face -face for the, since the first time, um, since I got fired, I don't even know if I talked to her when I got fired, uh, it doesn't matter. The point is that this is an honor for me because Melissa is somebody I respect so much. And I've seen the work she's done over the years and it's just inspiring. Um, she's got a new podcast called The Unseen Podcast, and she has The Unseen, or see, I'm sorry, See The Unseen coaching program, and also See The Unseen podcast. 
and she has Melissa George off consulting. And so these questions today are not about, you know, anything to do with us and when we work together, it's none of that. These questions are about who she is today, where her inspiration came from. It's gonna tap into her knowledge base. These questions are kind of wild, kind of fun. Um, it's gonna be a good time and you all are gonna get to know Melissa in a really unique way. Even if you already know Melissa, these questions are gonna help you get to know her more. And if you don't know her, these questions may help you fall in love with her. You know, like in a, what's not metaphorical, not a romantic, you know what I mean. Anyway, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome somebody that I admire and respect a great deal. Somebody that is going to inspire you and someone that you might want to hire as your next coach. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Melissa Georgioff to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. And welcome back to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. And I am so excited to introduce to you all Melissa Georgioff from Melissa Georgioff Consulting. And she also has her new podcast, See the Unseen, and her coaching program, See the Unseen. This is going to be awesome. I know, as I said in the intro, I know a little bit about Melissa, and I've been following her journey over the last several years. And it's so inspiring, the work she does. And she is my kind of human because of who she fights for. But that said, she is one of the most powerful and dynamic leaders I know. She's a true visionary. And she's somebody that I absolutely trust. If I'm looking for wisdom, if I'm looking for advice, she is somebody that I know that I can go to because she has so much wisdom and so many different aspects of life. And some of the people that she's worked with around the world you know, people talk about success and they look at fame, they look at celebrities. For me, I look at people that are working with people that can make change. So when you're working at a government level and you're having to make decisions or having to fight to get decisions made on behalf of other people, Melissa's someone in your corner. So without further ado, please welcome Melissa Georgioff to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. Melissa, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Josh. I appreciate it. It's good to it's good to see you again. Um, and I want to before we get into the 21 questions, I would like to ask, what are you grateful for today, and why? What am I grateful for? Well, I'm grateful for first and foremost my relationship with God, and uh, it's something that I've been working really hard on in the last couple of years. Um, I've always had a relationship, but it's just been kind of on and off here and there. And uh, so first and foremost, it's that. And then my family uh, who um, I just got married earlier in the year and I had a grandbaby who's turning two in September, which has been a real blessing uh, in my life and, and my, you know, my daughter and my son and um, my entire family. So yeah, that's what I'm thankful for and my health for sure. God will chase you down. <laughs> For sure. You can only get so far, but you cannot outrun God. All right. That's a beautiful gratitude. I love that. Um, all right. You ready for 21 questions? Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Here we go. Question one. If your consulting business was a time machine, which era would it transport clients to and what lessons would they learn there? Wow. These are some tough questions i would say um i think the era would be now right today in the current um you know even maybe 10 years you know five to ten years from now but i look at um what i'm really passionate about right now is uh the coaching program that i'm developing uh with a couple partners and that's to help mid-level managers mainly women but not just women but um, help them with their leadership skills. So how to empower, how to delegate, um, how to find balance in life, how to overcome limited beliefs, things like that. I never had a woman mentor my whole career. I learned from the CEOs of the company. And I just think that more companies need to invest in that mid-level manager. So I think it's really needed. I think a lot of companies are doing it at the senior leadership level but they really need to um, invest in the in the women and the employees that are doing most of the work. I love that, that's a great answer. Question two, imagine your coaching program as a board game. 
what would be the most challenging square to land on and how would players overcome it? Oh my gosh. The most challenging, I guess, would be scaling it because the way that um, I kind of see the business happening is growing very fast. And so I think that would be the biggest challenge of how do I um, continue to create capacity and capability and, and help other women learn how to coach as well. You know, and, and to that point, you know, women are getting more opportunities to speak, to, to step up as leaders, to run companies than ever before, or at least in, in my lifetime. And I'm, I'm loving seeing how women, like even women that I'm close to step up into their greatness and like stepping out into a man's world and becoming that face, that same face that used to be a man's face is now a woman's face. And it may be a woman's face of that's that from a different culture or it, and it's, it's inspiring to see because people are getting an equal shot at success. Now the, the, the playing fields being leveled and it's not just with women. It's also the underserved. The technology advancements we've had are now providing opportunities that were not available before, and it's exciting. And so to your point about that leadership role, like I, I think with your experience and background working with the people that you've had, I mean, how perfect, because you've worked with some very, very high level, powerful people to go make change in the world. So I love that. I really love that you're doing this. This is perfect. I think this is a grill. I, I'm, I'm kind of breaking the third wall here a little bit, but like this is a perfect role for you because Thank I you. think men would want you as a coach, but women, well, and I know women a lot need of, you. <laughs> and I know a lot of men who could benefit from uh, having some leadership coaching. And, and really I did, you know, I, uh, a CEO that I worked for invested in me and uh, Tavo Godfordson was a coach that works with a lot of CEOs and CFOs. And I spent a year with him and he really changed my life. He helped me to overcome some limited beliefs I had to find balance personally and professionally, to trust others, to empower and delegate. And so that's why for me, I think, gosh, I wish I would have had this, you know, 30 years ago when I started my career and how much you know easier maybe life would have been because women do have different challenges than men. And yeah. I've been the only woman on the senior leadership team for you know 24 years at a, a company that I was at. And so I, I never had a problem working with men uh, per se. It's just that we deal with things a little differently. Um, you know, I used to joke, there's no crying, right? In wheelchairs, but um, every now and then, you know, I tear up, you know, it's just, we're made differently and we're made, we're made in God's image. And, you know, we should respect each other that we're just, we think differently and we have, you know, we, we need different ways of being coached as well. That's good. That's really good. Question three, if your podcast could interview any historical figure, who would it be and what unexpected question would you ask them? Hmm. Um, any historical figure. Um, you know, I would probably interview the people that kind of started, um, you know, maybe like Per Uden, you know, who started Permobile. And, you know, it was uh, Euron, I think it was Euron's dad that started Permobile, a complex wheelchair uh, manufacturer. And I think about, you know, why did they, you know, the mobility and how all these pioneers got started and helping people become more independent and mobile. Uh, complex wheelchairs just have a very soft place in my heart. And so, and I've spent 30 years of my career uh, helping those people, helping people with disabilities get the equipment that they need uh, by working with health plans all around the country. And so, I don't know, I would probably interview the pioneers that were in the industry that started it. And some of them are still alive. I mean, it hasn't been that long, really. I mean, I want to say maybe 50 years ago or so, but, you know, there, I'm sure that there were you know, these people who um, just had, you know, it was, they wanted to live their passion and they wanted to help these individuals. It's a good answer. I like that. Number four, your services form a superhero team. Which service is the leader and what unique power does one possess? Say that one more time. Say that okay. again. Your services form a superhero team. Which service is the leader and what unique power 
does each one possess? You know, so for me, a little bit, um, I'm kind of in this transition period right now. So I am kind of doing some consulting for the medical device industry and then also doing women's coaching. So I want to do all the things that I'm passionate about. And my biggest passion has always been helping people with disabilities get what they need. And I think that's the most important thing. And I think that, um, you know, health plans, being educated on why these people need the equipment they need and having being the voice that can, you know, these people that are needing, you know, equipment, they already have all these challenges and struggles. The last thing that they need to do is to be able to be fighting and arguing with, you know, a health plan. And so for me, that would be the most important thing um, is creating a team that, you know, would be able to work with individuals and help them understand what's needed and make these people's lives easier. Because I just can't believe we were in the United States of America and that people with disabilities have to fight for what they need. It's just yeah. absolutely crazy in my mind. So mm -hmm. I, well, and I love that answer, especially because I worked in the same industry as you for 18 years. And, um, and 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 that the lessons I learned in advocating for other people um, helped me advocate for myself. And when I develop the the trimmer that I have, and or I call it the energy now, um, but I knew how to advocate for myself because I did it for so many people for so long. And and I felt I remember being in the hospital each time they were trying to put me in the psych ward because I was fighting like. All the tests came back negative. Please look over here. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, please look in this direction. They wouldn't do it. But I was fighting and fighting for myself. And I felt so bad for other people that were in the emergency room that didn't ha know how to advocate for themselves. They were being treated poorly. They were not going to get the care that they needed. And I was able to get it. I was able to fight for disability. I was able to fight for those things because I knew it. But they don't make it easy on people and you really right. do need somebody there to help you. So what a beautiful role for you because it's needed in, in the, in his health, things get a little bit crazier. There's going to be a lot of lost people that don't know what to do. They don't even know that they have certain rights or access to certain things, certain programs that it's free money or free food or free clothing or free access. So what a beautiful role that you're doing that. It's so important. Thank you. Okay. All right. Number five. If your career journey was a recipe, what would it be? Oh, I'm sorry. If your career journey, if your career journey was a recipe, what would be the secret ingredient that makes it uniquely yours? The relationships that I've developed over the years. Um, for me, it was and the the ability to tell the story and why these people need what they need. I think it, for me, it was never about growing my career and, you know, being an executive on the leadership team. I just could never stop fighting for the people that needed to, you know, be fought for. And so I could just never give up on those people. So to me, it's developing the relationships because people want to do business with people they trust and know and like. And I spent, you know, a good 30 plus years really putting the time and effort into it and also giving it back. You know, if they needed help, then I wanted to be there to help them. So yeah, the secret sauce for me is to be developing relationships with, with those people who, um, you know, want to do the right thing for people. That's perfect. I love that. Number six, describe a client success story. Just, sorry, I'm not supposed to laugh at my own questions. Describe a client success story as if it were a blockbuster movie. What's the plot twist that leads to the triumphant finale? Oh my goodness, this seems so dramatic, but- um, I'm a see. dramatic kind of guy, come on now. <laughs> well, I will I guess I'll share a story that um, when our new CEO came on board, I um, had met this, um, this woman who had a child with a disability and she was really ticked off at the company, thought we should do this and that. And I tried to explain the funding side of things. And, and so I said, you know what, I'll tell you what, the next time 
I, I'm just going to book a trip to Oklahoma. And she was in the middle of nowhere. And I said, I want to come meet with you personally. And so I went and I went, met with her and her child and her child. She explained to me had not had not had a bath in three, three months. OK, because they did not have, you know, with besides a sponge bath, they did not have the ability to they didn't have a special tub. They didn't have, you know, weren't able to give her a proper bath or bathe her properly. And so I got there. I'm driving. I feel like this was like kind of like the Aaron Brockovich kind of story. But I was driving this little bitty town and I, you know, go and meet her. And and she I was able to talk with her and explain the challenges of health care and why these things happen and why she couldn't get her chair repaired timely. And and then while I was there, I'm seeing that she doesn't have a, you know, a tub and it just hurt my heart. And so I picked up the phone and I called my brother who was in construction. And I said, Tim, do you know how to build this tub? Like we, I have to figure out a way for this girl to get a bath. And my brother's like, let me call my company. He calls his company. They donate the tub. They donate all the lumber. My brother drives to Oklahoma from Illinois to Oklahoma on his birthday. And he builds this tub for her. And that was the first time she ever had a bath in like three wow. months or something. And so, you know, I think, you know, when you say a movie, like, you know, I, I don't know if that's a movie quality, but for me in, in my life, it's those are meaningful moments um, to me that made a big difference. And I wanted her to know that people do care about her daughter and we do care about my, doing the right thing. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I guess that would be the moment that comes to mind that and, that and that's good and it is appropriate for a movie and i think that you know real stories matter and one area that now that i get to work in film and other things in media i i want to see these kind of stories made because they're real and they matter and there's nothing more inspiring i mean even with myself like with with what i've what i've lost i remember where i came from like I remember working with quadriplegics and people with ALS. You talk about unfair. Like I, I didn't feel sorry for myself all day long, but then I but how pathetic is that? Because there's like real heroes. Like there's people that become quadriplegics that decide to become skydiving Elvis Elvises. That's inspiring because they're not giving up on their dream. And like and and or when you see a miracle breakthrough like this, like that that inspires me. So Thank you for that answer. That was great. Absolutely. Number seven. If you could add one impossible, impossible feature to your consulting toolkit, what would it be and how would it revolutionize your work? Impossible feature. Okay. Um, that would be this easy button that said that anything that anyone that has a disability that has ALS, muscular dystrophy, cerebral palsy, brain injuries, whatever. If you have this special disability, you hit the easy button and the health plan pays for everything that you could possibly need. That would be my, uh, I guess my, uh, you know, whatever. That's a, that's a great answer. That's good. I, I, would, I would have thought of that. That's not even the answer that I came up for myself. That's good. Ooh. I mean, it seems not like you know brain surgery or anything like that it just seems like that's the right thing to do and like why why do we make it so difficult for for these individuals well and one of the things i'm most excited about in the fourth industrial revolution is there's going to be maybe not an easy button to push but there's going to be easier buttons to push you know for the underserved and for the disabled communities so uh, i'm great answer number eight your coaching program discovers a new leadership superpower. What is it and how does it change the game for other inspiring or aspiring leaders? A superpower. Um, I guess it would be the superpower to um, kind of move through all of the insecurities and all of the masks that we all put on to others. Um, the ability to see within um, or see the unseen as in my podcast, yeah. 
um, of just because there's so many times. I mean, I did it too all through corporate. I put on this mask of like performing and have to be the certain corporate person. And and honestly, I don't even know that I was being my authentic self all the time. And when you're not your authentic self, it it comes you know all these insecurities come up and it and you you just don't come across the same way that you really want to come across quite frankly my leadership coach the first question he asked me is like melissa how do you want people to feel when you lead them and i said well that i care about them that i love them that i want them to be successful that they're appreciated and he said well is that how you think they feel and i was like mm, well maybe not you know because i was tough on my team back then and so I do think that, you know, a lot of times it's working through all the stuff that's inside that we just don't show everybody, but having the ability to cut through all of that and let, and having, you know, working with someone you trust that you will, you know, share those things so that you can then grow and overcome, you know, those kind of blind spots, if you will. I really love that answer. Thank you. Number nine. If your podcast had to swap formats for a day, would it become a musical, a mystery novel, or a silent film, and why? Boy, you've got some tough questions, Josh. Um, let's see. The first one, a musical. You're answering them all beautifully. Okay. Well, I guess I have to say a musical because only for the fact that part of my podcast is also that I'm uh, have some friends that are singer songwriters who write for like Carrie Underwood and Luke Bryan and, you know, uh, Chris Jansen. And they are like, they have cre this creative mind and they write all these wonderful lyrics. And sometimes no one even knows who the heck they are. So I would make it all country music. Probably. Um, that's my favorite. Although I've been listening to a lot of Christian music. Um, but yeah, I guess it'd be a whole country music series. Good answer. I like that. But not an, again, not an answer I would have expected. I love this. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> number 10. Imagine your business model as a new planet. What unique properties does it have that make it habitable for success? Uh, I don't know the ability to transport yourself all over the place in a quick second to be in person meeting with people face to face. I think in this world, we're all so busy on zoom and, you know, while I do love zoom, it's allowed me to, you know, be at home, do a job, not have to travel all the time and be with your family. But also there's that face to face interaction that I think we all kind of miss. And there's something to be said for meeting people and looking at them eye to eye and developing relationships so maybe it would be you know some sort of planet where you're bouncing you know you're able to bounce around i don't know well i mean that technology exists um or <laughs> so in a way we're going to be able to do that <laughs> soon um I, the good answer i like that number 11 if you could send one message to your past self when you started your business what would it be but hold on, there's a bonus here. Limit limit the answer to a tweet length, 280 characters. Oh my goodness. Um. Okay, let's see. I would say, you know, it's okay to be yourself. To it's okay to be vulnerable. Mm. Uh, in vulnerability comes, uh, you know, where people trust you and. I think that that's probably the most important. Um, yeah, I just don't feel like I was always myself, my you know my best self, all those years. Good answer. I don't know how many characters that was, but yeah, I, I don't know. know. But overcoming <laughs> you know your insecurities and um, you know taking the mask off and being yourself. There you go. That's good. I and I agree with all of that. Um, I don't know why. Well, actually, I have a theory of why it's so hard for people to want to be themselves. But the most gratifying thing in the world is getting to that place of I'm good with me and I'm, and I'm good with my relationship with God and how God sees me. Because a lot of it, I think, with identity issues is, you know, sometimes we maybe we're not being who God created us to be. 
and that in itself can make somebody run go mad um but finding that sweet spot of like i'm good being me and i'm i know that god is you know right with how i'm being um sure. that, feel, that feels good and it makes it much easier to navigate life and also makes it easier to not worry about what other people think right well and that's why i love my podcast de developing the podcast because for me, I could just be my authentic self. This is who I am. I love doing it. It allowed me to have a, like a creative side. And then my other part of my podcast was really to um, bring visibility to to God and and to and I think having a better relationship with God has changed me as well. Sure. And you know that's that's really important too. Um, knowing that. You know he loves us no matter what and we don't have to perform and we don't have to be a certain way and um you know we're okay in his you know we're good in his image so yeah i think that you know life throws a lot at you and a lot of time we're not none of us are perfect and it's um what we do with all of those things that we've been through and that's part of that's part of why i want to coach women is to help them overcome a lot of the things that i've overcome and you know the the, uh, I didn't come up, I didn't grow up with money. Um, you know, when it rained, I got my bucket out and had five different buckets because we couldn't afford to fix the roof. I thought everyone did that. Right. So, you know, I grew up with this, you know, feeling differently about money and I worked really hard to, to have everything I ever had. And I did it all on my own. And so, but there's a lot of challenges along the way. And I just, that's why I want to help other women to, you know, let them know they're not alone and not to feel alone and to have you know someone out there that can help them kind of along the way yeah and i i think i said this before but i, I just think you're perfect for this because i i know some of the people you worked with and that the level you worked at and there's really no better coach for this than you and like well, you. i i just and i don't really i don't really endorse coaches that often but i can endorse you because and know what kind of leader you are and oh, i appreciate that yeah i think i think you're needed for sure i can i'm just sitting here thinking oh this person could use you <laughs> i'm going to be sending you clients anyway number 13 if your podcast listeners could vote on your next career move what wild options would you give them and which do you think would win um I think I would give them coaching women, you know, coaching women, of course, would be the first one. Um, well, I don't know about the first one, but advocating for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, and um, let's see. Yeah. And just really the podcast, you know, to me, I want, you know, it's a way to communicate to a lot of different people who can't maybe can't even afford coaching or sure. you know afford to invest in themselves so to me i also that's why i do the the podcast and i i've been more focused on you know interviewing people and interviewing people with disabilities and things like that or singer songwriters um but i really do want to start to more focus on the little the little nuggets that you learn along the way i mean i've self-improvement has been something that I've been passionate about my whole life. And I listen to different podcasts and different and read different books every single day. And so to me, I would say, you know, maybe they, that's what I would give them to vote for. And, you know, hopefully they would vote more of how do I help more women across the country uh, deal with the, the real challenges that they have. The one thing too, I'll just add to that, Josh, is I keep hearing the reason I wouldn't, I kept fighting for two years. I fought this, like this um, desire to help women because there's so many coaches out there that they want to coach the coach. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, the, it feels like this multi-level marketing scheme. It feels like, you know, <laughs> hey, sign up to, to, you know, make a million dollars i'll make you a millionaire yeah. you know and, and the high ticket sales coaches and all this and you're like where do i sign up for but those people now some of them may be from corporate some may not but a lot of them don't even have leadership skills like they've not done the job and i can't for me i just can't be hypocritical so it's like i want to know that i've been there i've done it and i can help another woman along the way and so, you know, I was the only woman on the senior leadership team for years. You know, I have 
was the senior lead uh, for the uh, women's network at my former company that were 600 women and that were mentored and coached. You know, I have came from, you know, no money. Uh, I did not graduate college. I had three years of college, never got my degree. Okay. That was an insecurity for me for years. I want women to know that if I can do it, they can do it too. No matter what your background is, no matter, you know, where you came from, you can be successful too. Yeah. So, yep, that's. I'm going to throw another job in there for you. Okay. Kingmaker. What, what kind of maker? Kingmaker. What does that I, mean? I think that if you ever, you make kings. You're the type of oh, leader, wait. a king, like king and queen. Yeah. You're a kingmaker. You have kingmaking vision because you see people. You see people's greatness. That's one of your gifts, is it not? I would you, say so. Yeah. yeah. All right. Because I, I was one of the people you took a chance on. But even though I couldn't see what you saw at the time, I see it now. So what I'm getting at is this. The reason I chose this question for you is because I was actually hoping you would go in this direction. If you ever branch off in your coaching, I believe that you would be a kingmaker helping boys that are trapped in men's body become men and become the men they were created to be. I think you have that skill set. Um, because you know the leadership that's required, you know the principles, you know the level of emotional maturity that's required. You have all those skill sets, and that would have been my answer for you, for the record. That's interesting because, you know, I also have um, considered, and I, this has also been something I've been thinking about for a couple of years now, is to develop an emotionally healthy course. Um, and really for people, whether it's your relationship, marital relationships, um, you know, and I went through many of these multiple courses, um, but helping people have the right kind of conversations with each other, the right kind of communication um, is really important too. And my husband is very much um, wanting to help men um, be the leader, the spiritual leaders that they're supposed to be. I mean, that's how it got God calls us to be is, you know, first and foremost, it's our relationship with God. Um, they kind of explain it like this, your relationship with God, um, you know, your relationship with your spouse, number two, and then kids and then career. And anytime that these things are upside down, that means we're not in relationship with the way God intended marriage to be. And so, you know, things like that, when I think about helping other people, and it's interesting, even last week, I, there was a woman that I've, or actually this week that I've talked to who can't see like how incredibly smart and incredibly talented she is, but I see something different in her that she doesn't see. And I could say the same, I'm sure there's women, this woman that I'm working with right now is a coach of mine. She sees things in me that maybe I'm like, are you sure, you know, are you sure I can do this? Um, so yeah, I think it is something that I've always seen people's talents or see the try and see the best in people and try and um give them the encouragement and the you know strength to to do to take the steps forward because in my whole career that's all i've done is figure things out myself i really didn't have anybody telling me hey do this go do that you know get this degree do that i just kind of figured it out along the way i watched a lot of courses took a lot of courses i read a lot of books i listened to a lot of youtube like I just figured it out myself. So. Love it. Number 14. Describe the most challenging project you faced as if it were a video game boss battle. What special moves did you use to win? Hmm. Most challenging. Um, there's been a lot along the way. Um, I would probably say in some of my bigger negotiations, um, you know, multi-million dollar negotiations with uh, different health plans, um, you know, certainly a lot of education, training, storytelling, relationship building, um, data analytics, um, you know, making sure that they're getting all the things they need, we're getting all the things we need, um, people with disabilities are getting all the things they need. So it's just like a moving chess game, I would say. Yeah. Um, that would probably be the most challenging, um, just making all of those things happen all the way to the end and signing on the dotted line and knowing that what all of that work 
all the sleepless nights, all the stress was meant something because I knew I could sleep at night because people were going to get what they needed. And I believed in our company. And so I did know that we were also going to take care of all these people too. Love it. Number 15. If you could, if you could combine your consulting business with any other industry, which would you choose and what revolutionary service would result? I, oh, this is a good one. So I would probably combine it with two different things. Um, probably like the prosthetic industry um, or robotic arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really love the robotic arms, the exoskeleton, all of that, um, anything mobility related. Um, but I would also combine it with um, like advocacy organizations or quite frankly, even like lawyers who are representing people with disabilities, because I do feel like people with disabilities are the most um, discriminated against in a lot of ways. I don't think it's necessarily on purpose, but I feel like the people that are making decisions about what they need and what they get um, don't really understand all the challenges that they're facing. And so I think it's so important that you know, the, and it's like the industry, it's like a, it takes a village to get like legislation passed or to protect, you know, access for these people. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, I would probably partner up with, you know, the prosthetic industry and maybe, you know, I don't know if lawyers is necessarily the way to go <laughs> with anything, but I <laughs> do think that how, why are these people not being, you know, spoke up for like why are these people having to fight so hard for what they need so i've got my theory but i'll save that for another broadcast <laughs> great answer number 16 <clears throat> your coaching program discovers a portal to an alternate dimension where leadership works differently what's the biggest surprise there I would say that women are heard and seen mm -hmm. and that um, they're appreciated for what they bring to the table. That, um, you know, I think that that visibility, having the courage to speak up um, and that, you know, they're not um, reprimanded for that or, sure. um, you know, and I think that that that's a, certainly a challenge in you know, in corporate America is, you know, they say, speak up, you know, tell women to speak up, be courageous. But then a lot of times when you do speak up, it's not always, you know, received well. And, and clearly, you know, it's the way in which we approach things, right? And sometimes we get women, we get emotional about things. Sometimes maybe, you know, it's also learning how to control your triggers and your emotions. And, you know, I've certainly uh, could do better uh, at that back in you know in the day. Um, and I've worked really hard to be better at that. But yeah, I mean, I think, you know, just being able to, you know, really do, you know, really being able to speak up and really share your opinions and your thoughts openly without, you know, being judged or being, you know, um, uh, qu you know, quieted, I guess. Um, I think that would be revolutionary that's a perfect answer number 17 if your podcast had to create a theme park ride what would it be like and what unexpected turns would it take well you've got some interesting questions josh um <laughs> i guess it would be a definitely a roller coaster uh, <laughs> because you know i think that it's been it's been interesting i developed it for the fact of all the things that I'm passionate about. Yeah. People with disabilities, getting what they need, um, you know, the young people helping them grow in their career and singer songwriters who don't get the visibility they need or that they deserve. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they have the people making all those millions of dollars, but they're the like creative um, minds behind the songs. And then my faith, right? So. It's really kind of, I think, a roller coaster because it's kind of twisting and turning in all a lot of different directions, but it's all the things that I'm passionate about. And I think it's bringing visibility to people who deserve the whole spotlight in my world. Yeah, like you said, you could be, you know, working in the movie business, um, 
you know, but for me, it's, I want to bring visibility to people I care about yeah. and the things that I think are, are worth seeing. I had a guy, you know, no arms, no legs. He was a cornhole champion, you know, Dayton Weber on my podcast. Super cool. I had a woman who's 21 years old who sings at the Bluebird Cafe, who's blind, you know, playing guitar and singing and with low cash and Lauren Elena and like she, Sarah Hardwick. She's amazing. Um, it's just all these like unique individuals that I've been able to have. And I think they deserve the spotlight and yeah. that's why I created it. So um, just to interject here really quick, what you're doing is embodying what the fourth industrial revolution is because for a long time, the way that technology has worked, the way you succeed is you niche out, like you niche, you niche everything to death. That's how you, how SEO has worked. That's how you become social media famous. That's why all the people with large accounts talk about the same thing over and over and over again. It's a niche, but what's changing and it's already happening now is that that is, ch that's completely changing. Multi niche is the way forward, but multi niche on your own platform where you host your own content, you create your own courses, but everything is done on your own platform and you save your intellectual property for that platform. You monetize what you want, you give out what you want, that's up to you, but it, they're called media monetization platforms. And the cool thing is, whether it's for the disabled, the underserved, or for the richest of the rich, we all have that same opportunity. But one of the most practical reasons why this needs to be done is one intellectual property will be the one value that we have because every other job, well, I mean, they're not gonna be there, things are changing. So what this does is it gives us an opportunity, the opportunity with the technology changes, even though it's going to erase so many jobs, jobs most of us didn't want it to begin with, but the opportunity is that we get to express our talents, our gifts, and our intellectual property in a way that provides value and entertainment or whatever for other people, but we can earn a living off of that. And that's the new systems that are being put in place. And what you're doing is stepping into that. And so it's really, really encouraging. And even the guests that you have, they all have that same opportunity because mm -hmm. we're going into a very tribal, community-based world and where people like yourself that step up and become thought leaders and you know leading from a microphone essentially you're going to lead your tribe and so you're, you're you're stepping into it beautifully so it's really inspiring for me to hear that you're doing this because the world needs your voice and the world needs what you're doing next Thank question you. number 18 imagine your work-life balance as a circus act what's your signature move that keeps everything in perfect harmony Keep putting god first yes. so there you go yeah so every day um and this is something you know that's been a little different for me for the last couple of years now but i um start my day with kind of a you know routine right feed the dogs sit mm -hmm. I, before i do anything i literally pray and i first of all um just tell god that i love him and then ask for forgiveness of my sins and specifically thank him for my family and all the blessings in my life and then ask his holy spirit to come in and direct me and lead me in every which way and so i did a podcast on how to pray three to in three to five minutes um but that's first and foremost i think mm -hmm. um important for me and then putting my family first which you know quite quite frankly um for many years i just it was my career you know i was just traveling and and working and work was everything and so to me it's putting my family first and knowing like if they need me then everything else stops and then you know but i am a workaholic i'd say you know i love work and i love what i you know i love advocating for people with disabilities and quite frankly it's it's been a little challenging because I, I did lose my job in 2022 and it was something i was really passionate about doing and, and my job was eliminated and then you know i took another job and quite frankly at the end of this month this job will be eliminated because you know they're having some challenges as well and they're going to outsource things and um i'm staying on to help transition them but you know for it is more about you know stepping out almost like 
reinventing yourself and doing what God calls me to do. Like I, I have struggled with this for two years because I keep praying about it. I don't want it to be about me. Like I don't need to be on social media. I don't know. I don't want to necessarily be out there with, you know, on Instagram and Facebook and all these different things. But when I keep praying about it, this is where I'm being led. And it's more about, you know, kind of what our pastor said is about making God famous, not making me famous, but sharing with the world how he's changed my life. And if I'm, you know, I'm a sinner and I've done, you know, my life has not been perfect by any means. But if, you know, if I can change my life, so can other people. And that's really what we're called to do. We're called to share um, you know, how God has blessed us in our lives. And I always felt blessed because of my health. And so I saw these people who were in complex wheelchairs and who have prosthetics, arms and legs. And like, why would they have to, if I'm healthy and I can go tell this story to some health plans, you know, then I just feel blessed that I'm able to do that. So it never felt like a job to me. It just always felt like this is what I'm supposed to do. So then again, it's like, if that's gone, how do you find your passion? How do you keep doing the things that you're being led to do? I love it. It's so good. Number 19. If you could instantly gain any skill set to enhance your business, what would it be and how would you have acquired it in this hypothetical scenario? It would probably be to have a stronger finance background. Um, you know, I just, I'm so in awe by the finance teams that I've worked with that can just do all of this, you know, percentages in their head and, and create 25 spreadsheets and merge them all together and yeah. all of that sort of thing. I just think there's such, you know, I don't know. I just, I have a huge respect for like people who can analyze the data and um, it's not, you know, I would say I've gotten a lot better at that, but it's never been like my strong suit, I would say, but um, I have a incredible um, respect for, you know, those individuals. Well said. Number 20, your future self visits from 20 years ahead. What's the most surprising advice they give you about your career path? Um, most surprising is that I took a leap of faith, like that it was not like, I didn't know where it was going to go, but look how in 20 years, you know, I was able to, um, make a difference in a lot of people's lives. And something that really hit home for me, as you get older, you know, you think about dying, you think about the legacy that you're going to leave. And I thought about my little grandbaby and I thought, you know, what's he going to think about, you know, 53 year old Melissa, you know, like I'm a young grandma right now, but what about in, you know, 20, 30 years from now, yeah. will he see me as like, you know, some old lady with gray hair, you know, <laughs> walking slow. Um, I wanted him to remember me like, Hey, my grandma was cool. She had a podcast. She did this. She fought for people. With disabilities. <laughs> she did that. So it became more about the, you know, the legacy that we leave um, is what I think about. So good. That was a great answer. Number 21, last question. If your entire professional journey was a quest in a fantasy novel, what magical artifact would you be seeking and how would finding it transform your work? You're going to have to repeat that question. Okay. That's a tough one. If your entire professional journey was a quest in a fantasy novel, what magical artifact would you be seeking and how would finding it transform your work? Oh my goodness. I don't know. That's a magical wand to make it all just happen <laughs> without having to do, you know, all of the difficult work. I don't know. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So you survived 21 questions. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank You're you. I that was very intense. Those are the most difficult questions I think I have ever had thrown my way. <laughs> you, you handled it like a champ. Um, so what I would like to do is give you an opportunity to literally have the last words. Um, there's no comment from me here. You get to have the last words, but what I would like you to do within your last words 
is to plug your podcast, your consulting business, plug anything and everything you want. The final word is yours. Well, thank you, Josh. I would say that I am open to uh, new opportunities. I want to help people with disabilities get what they need. Um, my consulting is about that. It's about you know helping company, small companies, mid-sized companies, large companies, whatever. Um, you know, from a complex rehab technology perspective, durable medical equipment, robotic arms, robotic legs, prosthetics. Um, I'm very passionate about the mobility sector of the business. Um, so, and also helping women grow in their career, um, helping mid-level managers and employees, um, not just women, but also men um, who want to get to the next level, who want to learn how to delegate and empower and overcome insecurities and limited beliefs. Um, my podcast, I would just say that, um, you know, I'm going to keep doing all the things that I'm passionate about. And, um, and I'm just going to keep praying about all where God's leading me with all of this, uh, whether it's an emotional healthy course or these different online courses. But my biggest goal is to make a difference in people's lives and to help the person maybe that I used to be and, and help them kind of overcome the things that I've already overcome in my life. So you can reach me on See the Unseen podcast. Um, and I'm on YouTube, Spotify, um, Apple podcasts, all, all of the, uh, social media platforms. And, uh, also my email is melissa.georgeoff at outlook.com. And, um, I'm on LinkedIn as well. So, uh, reach out if there's any ever, an ever, any opportunity for me to help.